to head on to the track and get hooked up to the big sled. I can hear him. Bonneville, Alberta, Billy Cole has been pulling tractors and trucks for years and years and years. This truck was a regular on our circuit for years. He's kind of converted it to more of a performance fun truck. And tonight he's got a special rider riding along with him for his very first ride. And tonight you're riding with Billy Cole. He's the founder of one of our major sponsors here tonight. Our boss is riding with him tonight from Yorkton Distributors. And they are going to put on a show for you tonight. This truck is incredible. Beautiful, beautiful truck. And it's got one of them screaming jimmies in it. He's got about four turbos, floors, and everything on this thing. This truck makes some horsepower. And you can have the chance to win a ride tonight on this truck. Buy your 50-50 tickets. Chance to go for a ride with Billy Cole. Right now, Art Malouse is riding with him. And if you ever get a chance to get out to Art Malouse's to go see his Super Tracks Museum just north of town, amazing. So we're getting Billy hooked up to the sled. We're going to use the big sled for him tonight. Because that's a lot of horsepower to hold back. So we got the Hoffert Eliminator sled out of Vibe or Odessa, Saskatchewan. He's getting the green flag. The green lights are flashing. He's ready to pull. Billy Cole, Bonneville, Alberta. The stock diesel trucks, we actually only have one tonight, I think. We have some severely modified diesel pickup trucks. But we've only got one stock one that we're going to be running, but we're going to get the big sled back. Because we hooked them to the big sled. We got a antique yank and away right here now, there are we. Slide back from the over, it looks like. A little roll crop. And uh, he's on the list to should be Harvey Kenner. 49 over 66. <laughs> Give him a big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen, tug along with the old antique. That is one neat little tractor for sure. It's called a roll prop. If you look at the front axle. The front wheels are exactly the same width as the back wheels, so that's taking straddle the corn, the potatoes, the turnips, whatever, and uh, that stayed in the rows, so it's called roll crop. It's a, a good looking unrestored tractor. 
And we've got some amazingly restored tractors going to be coming up a little later on in the tug too. And you know, myself as an antique, I'd like to learn how to get restored too. <laughs> there is no hope for us. <laughs> All of those bad decisions that we made as young kids are starting to show. <laughs> oh no. Exactly. So we're going to start as, as uh, was mentioned here, we're going to start with a stock class. There's only one stock diesel. Terry Tatusi out of York, and I hope I said that right. 5-9 uh, Cummins, 2007 vintage, and this has got a stock 5.9 in it. So he's from the Olsen Diesel team, and uh, Dallas can tell me about Olsen Diesel. I should not be a good chance to do that. Yes, and Olsen Diesel is one of our big sponsors here tonight. We absolutely appreciate it. Of course, we've got our York and New Holland tractors. They are going to be very busy tonight. Anybody that volunteered up to drive them tractors say they're going to be busy because uh, every pole, they're out putting the track back into the same shape. We've got an amazing track here, and we have to ask or take this opportunity to thank uh, Ray Belos, who built the track. He came in with his equipment, all of his big equipment, and built the track. And we have to thank Delwin from Liebert Trucking. He brought this amazing clay, and I don't know where he was hiding it, but it's just like a marshmallow. It's the best track that we've pulled on for years, and it really holds the horsepower. So last night, our pullers, they didn't really know what to expect, but they do tonight. So there's some tune-up changes, some weight changes, so we're going to see a whole different race. Oh, yeah. The this is... Steve Buckle, it's 56 Oliver, another road crop. Arvin Schroeder's driving. Oh, oh yeah, he is. Okay, yes sir, I see that. But it is Steve's tractor, I believe. So again, modified stock antique, modified as such as the Canadian flag. And uh, you've got to wear a cowboy hat when you're driving one of them. Absolutely, and he's starting to yank the wheels already. Go, Harvey! Look at that, wheelie, yes! Nicely balanced. Yeah, well, and Harvey said he grabbed a burger from the uh, burger barn here before he started just to get the weight on the back wheels. Doing a heck of a job. Oh, right down to the bear. Yes, yes oh. sir. Harvey Gilder, ladies and gentlemen. Harvey was instrumental in getting all of our antiques lined up. And one of the most special ones that we're going to get to see tonight is sitting up over in the corner by the uh, the big sled there. We have an old Rumley that we're going to hook to the sled tonight, too. 22 Rumley oil pole on steel. Big old twin. That's kind of what started for John Deere was an opposed distant twin. Yeah, and I hauled this thing in with our company, Bailey Boys Towing, and we had to go out to Atwater, Saskatchewan to pick this thing up. And when you look at it, it doesn't look that heavy, but that thing's heavy. Like, it, every piece, there's no plastic in that one. And the steel grates, they got great big grouser bars on them. And that thing, too, last night, he ripped up the track pretty good with that thing. They're an interesting unit. Rumley Oil Pole. Yeah, we're going to get to see that a little bit later on. So they got some small issues with the... Uh, Slide by the looks of it. They'll get it figured out. We've got the best guys on it. The Hoferts are uh, another one of our big teams that we have here tonight. They're from Odessa, Saskatchewan. They own Hoferts Services in Odessa, and they own these pulled uh, sleds. The, the Hofert family is synonymous with tractor pulling for like since the 70s. Uh, his dad and uncles, they all had tractors, and when Joe was growing up as a little kid, the, the sport kind of died off a bit, so they ended up uh, doing a little bit of repair and maintenance to some of the old ones. Joe got it all started up again, and that's, uh, once again, one of the reasons why we're here. Joe got this series started up, and we're enjoying driving all over Western Canada doing our tractor pulling. We got another antique, and he's got some wheel speed going on there. He grabbed another car, that's a case, Model C, and uh, actually, got to look at this here, so I'll get this right. Matthew Just, 1955 DC4. I said Model C, I was wrong on that. 
Just give you an idea, the first half of the pole was 168 meter inches. The next one was an all of it, a 205 feet. And now we got this case of Matthew just doing his pole here. Unrestored. It Except is a, for a new muffler. Yeah, and, and one newer tire. Oh, yeah. yeah, one yeah. New, it's, it's for turning left. Yeah, there you, you go. You're out at the Yellowhead <laughs> International Raceway tomorrow. You'll be turning the left. <laughs> yeah. And we'll just get a distance here. 219.6 is the distance for that. So these guys all weigh in at 6,000 pound range right now. They're pretty light. Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank the uh, Yorkton Fire Department for coming here tonight and keeping us safe. We always hope that we don't have to use them, but we're very thankful to have them here tonight and the uh, ambulance department too. Appreciate that. We have a load of sponsors that we have to thank, and most of them are sitting over in the quiet section of the VIP section over there. But actually, they were louder than this group over here. We're going to have to work on that a bit. Maybe the beer's flowing over there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the beer gardens was almost louder than this big main stage. <laughs> you know, this, this big main stage, this was built in the 30s. Really? And there's been a lot of butts in those seats. <laughs> but I guarantee you they're not as quiet as the group we have tonight. We're going to have to change that. We'll, try, we'll work on that. We're going to need your help, obviously, <laughs> up there, but we'll work on that. So we have to thank uh, Yellowhead uh, Traders and Trucking. We want to uh, thank the Feral Agencies, Richardson Pioneer Limited, Richardson International, Rocky Mountain Equipment, uh, Dynasty Diesel and Repair, they had a big event going on at their shop today. They had a dyno day where you could show up with your truck and put it up on the dyno and figure out how many horsepower you got at the wheels. I thought we were going to try to take some of these uh, pulling units down there and run on the dyno and see if we could show them what the horsepower really looks like. we got to thank uh, DR Auto for their sponsorship, Newton Landscaping and Triple A Directional Drilling. What a great group of guys and gals for doing that. Harvey, uh, I believe this is uh, 1959 Oliver Harvey Penner. We saw Harvey pull before with this Ollie. 6,400 pounds now. The first track they pulled only weighed 3,500. The second case was 4,300. Then uh, 4,460. This Ollie is 6,400 pounds. So as we go down the track, they're getting heavier, a little more horsepower, a little more torque. The girls are bar hit and bingo. And uh, and what did we say? 220? Then it was biting. That's yeah. where it was before. Now we'll see what Jody rates down here. We don't have our sign working up there. We're rigged up to go on the big sled now. 223.5. You're right. You're so right, it's Alex. just past the 220 mark that ground. three feet when that girls yeah. are hit. Yeah, it's. It's the equalizer, that's for sure. For those of you that weren't here, we'll review that one more time. You see the weight box coming up, that adds weight onto that pad. He can also, hasn't been doing it tonight, but he can drop the wheels, those little wheels that are above the front pad there, add or subtract weight to that pad as he goes. But, there's a grouser bar, it's like a greater blade on that thing, and when it hits, you see what happens all of a sudden, they stop. So the idea there is, put the brakes on, you think you're good at pulling, let me show you this. Yeah, he tug you down very good. And he likes to win. Yeah. Ted, Ted loves to win, right? It's Ted, Ted, Ted is the equalizer. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. But when, when we've seen earlier during our warm-up pulls there, with them streamers, Ted just had his arms in the air. I can't do nothing, I can't slow him down. Maybe we should be hooking them to the big sled. Yeah. I agree with you. Just like those big diesel pickup trucks are about to do. They could do that. Okay, we got our diesel pulling up to the front here. Terry Tosi. I hope they see that right. 5.9 Cummins, this baby is stock. Now he's sponsored by Olson Diesel and from New York in here, so 5.9 Cummins. Dodge, dodge, dodge in this truck pulling class. Huh? Absolutely, like a, I'm a Chevy guy and I'd like to see some D-Maxes pulling in I'm here. I'm a but... Chevy guy too, but there is a reason for that. The Chevs and Fords run V8s, the Dodge run an inline six. The inline six power curve is so much easier to control. Now you see he's got tuners in there. Wow. Look at this smoke. Wow. wow. That's a stock truck. Olsen skin went out and down the tuner. He can stop it. Good. What a job! No wheel hop. Right on the money. 
you're right, Wilson's did some work on that baby. And that's a daily driver, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. He probably plugged some tune into that. And yeah, that doesn't matter, but you know, if that is the stock class, I can't wait to see what we got in store. And you saw where the weight box was. What he was doing there, this rig has a drive line too. Now, if you look as he's backing up, the wheels are down, the back of the pad is in the air. He can modify that sled exactly the same as the mini sled. But what a pull, what a hook. That's our only truck in that class, so guess what? He won! He won! He won that class! So, Olsen Diesel with the amazing tune up in that thing. Fantastic job. Oh, looks like we got Harvey stole another tractor. Harvey's having fun out here, driving an Oli this time. Should be an Oliver 770. We'll see what he says on the side. They're messing all this up. If it is the Oli 770, Neil Weber's tractor. Yeah. Seven thousand and eighty pounds that hot rod weighs without the driver on it. And like I said, Harvey was over at AW and grabbed a burger, so it's probably closer to that eight thousand pounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Unless you visit the little boys' room first. Yes. The the they, are, they don't want to do that. They want all the weight they can get on there. You see the new Holland tractors, Dallas. You know about them. Yeah, you're the track, the track of them. Absolutely, and these are brought to us by Yorkton, New Holland. Just down the number 10 highway, great group of guys. Big sponsorship with us. Not only did they bring us some cash for sponsorship, they brought us some amazing equipment. And we're using this equipment. Every pull it goes through, we are using these to flatten the track back down, fill in a little bit of holes. And without these tractors, it would be up to me and Wayne with shovels to fill the holes. And once again, we don't get a body this good looking by shovel. <laughs> so we're glad that they brought those tractors here. And now this this is the truck that took it all last night, ladies and gentlemen. Watch this, you guys. Derek Menzies, Zud Oxbow. 5'9 Cummins. We're talking five nine big time modifications. You see the dual wheels in the back. You see the stacks that come out of the hood. You see that big weight box on the front. And we'll tell you about the weight box when he makes this pass. But suffice to say, big time boost, big time intercooling, big time fuel. He nice. spools it up to get the turbo singing. There's a boost, add some fuel, and you'll tell out by the smoke. When he hits the fuel curve, right there, he's done. It might get a little smoky. <laughs> you should be here. Wow, is that a good look at the holes he left? Now we're gonna talk a little bit about four-wheel drive pulling while the sled's going back. And you have a look at Derek's truck. Look at the gap between the fender and the rear tires. And look at the gap between the fender and the front tires. You see the gap is much narrower on the front. You see that big weight box on there? To get the perfect hook, as he just showed us how to do that, you add a ton of weight to the front. The angle of that chain that hooks onto the sled pulls the back end down. They want exactly the same weight on all four tires. That makes the perfect hook as far as traction goes. So they're allowed to be in a weight category. I'm not sure what the weight is for these guys, but they add weight to that box and try and balance it so they get exactly the same weight on all four tires. Totally different than two-wheel drag, but there is why you see that gap on the front. When we get into the mod four buys, there's going to be a whole lot more weight on the front yet. They build them as light as possible. With a street motor or a street unit like this, 
all the weight is in that truck on the engine, of course, all being in the front, but because it is basically a stock style truck, it can only add X number of pounds to that. Another thing that does occur a lot, they'll add more weight on the left side than they do the right side, and that in turn offsets the torque of the motor. The motor wants to lift the left side of the truck, so that's what they do. We got little Craig and Wilson working this McCormick. This is a this is the one that runs on the disco. This is an amazing tractor. It is. The disco is making the smoke. Yes. And when he runs it on fuel, it cleans it up. So I didn't know they were doing fuel, Dallas. You taught me something. Yeah. Well, they taught me something because they that that young fellow on that seat of that tractor knows more about that tractor than a lot of the old fellas here. He, uh, they live and breathe this uh, antique tractor stuff, the Wilson family from Duff's to Saskatchewan. Power steering, obviously, right? Yeah, that's why he's got big pipes. <laughs> <laughs> so any of you young ladies in the crowd there, right now, he's single. He's got this tractor here, so I don't know. Yeah. They, that's they, they make his tractor sexy, yeah, so. Exactly, there you go. <laughs> so, so Brian McSween. Now, Brian was telling me earlier, there should be a firefighter in there. We can't see who's in the passenger seat. Oh, he's taking one of the firefighters for a ride. The firefighter for a ride. Another much remodified 2004 vintage 590. There's the fuel curve and here. That was way better than last night. There was no firefighter in there. He told me he was going to do that, but obviously that didn't work, so we had to talk about quotes. We saw Derek Kinsey's crank a 35316. Now look at the number, a 35340. Wow, three inches difference. Actually, two inches in the box. Awesome. awesome. That is close pulling right there. Absolutely. And he's got them special pole tires on that one. Yes, he does. He uses big seat depth, big point gallons. Tires make a huge difference for these rigs as well. These have a Chevron pattern. If you look at the tread, we're going to be talking about that on a lot of the other units. Not the MD. Now he's stuck. There we go. <laughs> but those Chevy, uh, those Chevron pattern are big seat depth pulling tires that built specifically for this. They don't have big lugs on them. See the little bit of dirt he left there? When you see a big luck tire come along, there's going to be like four times that amount of dirt. The more dirt in front of the sled, the harder it is to pull. So, Dixie Beck made many small treads about a quarter of an inch deep. They sharpen them with an angle grinder, and that keeps a sharp edge. I, I've seen them out in the pits doing that with an angle grinder, and they're sharpening the tires. Yes, so we got your the new Holland plot and then big ruts out that he left behind. We just had a little massive pull through on our antique side. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, get your 50 50 tickets. Chance to win some cash. Chance to go for a ride with Crazy Billy Cole in that big Red Express truck. We're going to make that draw just after the uh, intermission. We're going to go about halfway through our show. We're going to have about a 15 minute intermission. We're going to give the fire department a ride in the monster truck and we're going to see if we can get a couple of loads of people through with the monster truck too, well we get a chance to uh, convert our big sled up to handle the big horsepower. And when you got here, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you grabbed a program. They had programs for sale at the front gate. Just $3 for a program, but it's an excellent souvenir, and it's also something that you can take back with you tonight when we open up the pits and you get to go back and visit with the drivers and look at the tractors and the trucks. There is some amazing machines back there. And there's a paint jobs. Paint jobs are unbelievable. They're not stickers on a lot of those trucks back there. They're hand painted. And we got one nasty unit that's going to be coming up in our two-wheel drive class. It's called the Hunter. And he has one amazing paint job. All hand painted. You can kind of see his nose sticking up in the air. The light green on the side there. We got... That's my favorite class, two-wheel drive class. The big horsepower and, and wheels in the air 
and excellent, excellent trucks, and trucks that I haven't seen in a long time are racing again. So we got another highly modified diesel truck coming up. We do, and Russ has been doing a heck of a job throughout the season anywhere I've been. Russ McGuee out of Weyburn. Now we talked about all these five nine Cummins you saw there, and you saw the smart. That means a ton of fuel, a ton of boost. Russ has got a 6.7. Cummins in this hot rod, 2008 vintage, 3500 Dodge. Again, weight box in front, more weights on the left side. Spooling it up, you know the deal, there it is. That can break parts. <laughs> parts in a bit. That is an awesome run. The Wee Farms on Wayne Wins and Scatter. So he had to beat that 353. We were almost high there. And he saw a 315 A Terry with a stock dodge that's totally stock. 299. Wow, look at this. There's the difference between a modified truck and a stock one. We share a little green store to Oliver coming down here as well. Dr. Rowley, what a job on Tuna Man. This is, yeah, if you get a chance to go back and have a look at some of these antiques, they, there's some that have uh, many, many hours of restoration in them. And this is one of them. This is a, one of the nicest looking Oliver. Oh, wheels in the air! Tug along. Good job. That means all that weight on that dual drag will transfer to the rear wheels. The angle of the, the chain on the sled is pulling it down. The hitch height has a big, big advantage or disadvantage depending on the height of that hitch. If the hitch is too low, it will not lift the front end transfer the weight. If it's too high, they get such a dramatic really going that all the weight ends up more on the sled than on the back wheels. So it's all about hitch height and it's all about 